Coming up on today's show, the global passenger plug-in market reaches 8.8% as sales soar more than 70% year on year, Nissan and Honda announce new plans for electric vehicles independently of one another, and one company tries to convince us that the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo is the perfect camping vehicle. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to your weekly news roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. T-E-N. I hope if you celebrated Thanksgiving last week or Hanukkah this, you had a wonderful time. And yes, I am wearing a hoodie, not a jacket. There is a reason, and I'll tell you more later. Make sure you hit the bell and subscribe, and if you're so inclined, become a patron over at patreon.com. If everyone who watched donated $1 a month, we'd be able to do so much more. Today's show is sponsored by UGears. Inspire, educate, and entertain your loved ones this holiday season with one of UGears' incredible, fully functioning wooden mechanical models. Stick around, and we'll tell you more. And today's show is also sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. New name, but the same great organization that could help you transition to a cleaner future and help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. The automotive industry has, frankly, had a bit of a naff year. Supply chain woes and constant price changes have made even buying a used car an absolute nightmare. But it turns out that the plug-in market hasn't had as bad a year as you might think. That's because global plug-in car sales for the month of October have just been released by EV Volumes, and it seems electric vehicle sales are booming. During October, 589,000 new plug-in vehicles were sold around the world. A massive 70% more than were sold in October last year. This means that battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles, 6.2 and 2.6% respectively, accounted for 8.8% of all new cars sold during October. It's the highest yet, but we still have a lot of work to do. When Volkswagen unveiled the ID Buzz concept a few years back, it created a lot of buzz in the plug-in vehicle world and mainstream automotive world. Essentially the spiritual successor to the iconic Volkswagen Type 2 Microbus and Volkswagen Transporter, this compact all-electric vehicle is one that we've been very eager to get our hands on. Over the last few years, Volkswagen has confirmed that it will be coming to market, but while we know it's due in 2022, we don't know a whole lot more. This week, though, Spy Shots, which we can't share because we've not got the money to spare to pay the several thousand dollars Spy Shots normally sell for, were taken of the ID Buzz undergoing winter testing. And unlike previous Spy Shots, the car is wearing very little camouflage. While what I'm showing you here is the ID Buzz concept, for obvious licensing reasons, I think we're in for a treat. About eight years ago, the CEO of Fiat Chrysler, the late Sergio Marchione, famously begged Fiat customers not to buy the Fiat 500e because it lost the company thousands of dollars every time one was purchased. Since his death, there have been a lot of changes at the company, most noticeably the merger with Piaggio Citroen to become Stellantis. And so far, the messages we've been getting from Stellantis have been pretty EV positive. But this week, Stellantis' CEO Carlos Tavares told Reuters that the pressure being exerted on the auto industry to accelerate the shift to electric vehicles would cause major problems, stating that it would increase the price of making cars by 50%, something that couldn't be transferred to customers, Tavares warned that the cost of going electric is, quote, beyond the limits of most automakers. The nuance is that while the company seems committed to EVs, it is also worried about their profitability and the health of the industry long term as companies rush to play catch up. No comment. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know that Toyota hasn't always been super eager to get on the electric vehicle bandwagon, choosing instead to focus on hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Last month, we saw the global debut of its first mass-market EV, the unimaginatively named BZ4X. And side note, yes, while both RAV4 EV models it made previously were truly awesome, I actually owned one, neither were mass market, which is what Toyota says the BZ4X will be. This week, we learned how it plans to sell the same in Europe, and, well, it's a bit old-fashioned. 
Rather than train dealership staff on electric vehicles, the BZ4X will be relegated to specialised hubs inside select dealerships with specially trained stale staff tasked with selling it. We know from history how that went from BMW, Nissan and others, so let's hope history doesn't repeat itself. Talking of Nissan, the Japanese automaker has just announced its future roadmap called Nissan Ambition 2030 and it's promising to launch 15 new EV models over the next nine years. At a special event at its headquarters in Yokohama, Japan, the company unveiled a slew of concept cars. The Nissan Chillout, the Hangout, the Max Out and the Surf Out, as well as the Aria single seat concept. The first utilizes the CMF EV platform that underpins the Nissan Aria and Renault Megane E-Tech Electric, but the Hangout, Max Out and Surf Out are based on a brand new platform that Nissan says it's developing, a platform that uses solid state batteries with a cost per kilowatt hour of just $75. Nissan says we'll see its first solid state battery launch sometime around 2028 and we're frankly keen to try them out. Honda, just like Toyota, has traditionally focused on building hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles rather than battery electric vehicles. But now EVs are about to play a more prominent role in its future. As recently appointed CEO Toshihiro Mibe detailed this week in an interview with Automotive News, he wants Honda to go all electric by 2040. Although in Honda's world, that could be either battery electric or hydrogen fuel cell electric. In order to do this, Mibe says he hopes to continue Honda's partnership with General Motors, which will be making some of Honda's EVs for North America, as well as establish a similar relationship with another automaker with more advanced EV technology. I am not sure if that's a slight at GM, but given some of the stuff GM has been stating lately, <coughs> that's, uh, that's pretty funny. In the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, Polestar is one of the rare brands that's begun to take names and go after the leaders. And while we haven't had a chance yet to drive a Polestar 2, I just learned my local enterprise has one on its fleet, so yay! This week, Polestar published its latest episode in a documentary series called Precept, from concept to car, in which it gave us the first real glimpse of the vehicle that the Precept concept will become, the Polestar 5. A four-door GT with sweeping rear and flowing lines, the Polestar 5 will debut in 2024. While what we've seen thus far isn't production vehicle status yet, we understand that what Polestar is sharing right now is pretty much what we'll get in a few years' time. Joining the already in production Polestar 2 and soon to debut Polestar 3 electric SUV in the Polestar stable, you know that the Polestar 5 is going to become the brand's new halo car. For the last few years, General Motors has been the automaker in second place in the plug-in vehicle market in the US, even if that second place is several states behind the leader, Tesla. But as Morgan Stanley detailed in a note to clients this week, GM will lose its second place this year to its long-term rival Ford. During the first 10 months of the year, Ford sold just under 22,000 Mustang Marquis in North America, while GM had managed to sell just under 25,000 Bolt EVs and Bolt EUVs. But with most of GM's sales taking place earlier this year, no bolts selling or in production right now, Morgan Stanley says Ford will sell about 3,000 more EVs by the end of this year than GM. That's not exactly leading now, is it? Late last year, the BMW Motorrad unveiled a new concept in the form of the CE04, an all-electric maxi scooter that looked like it belonged in either a 1980s vision of the future or Blade Runner, which, come to think of it, is the same thing. It's already headed into production in Europe with both a police and civilian version going on sale, but this week we learned something that we thought would never happen. The CE04 is coming to North America. Due to go on sale early next year, the CE04 will start from just under $12,000 and will offer around 80 miles, 128 kilometers of range per charge. Now don't get me wrong, we're all for new electric two-wheelers entering the market, but as Ryan F9 recently detailed, maxi scooters aren't really all that popular in North America. BMW Motorrad knows this, but it seems to think that the CE04 is car-like enough to get folks to leave their cars at home and jump on a scooter instead. What do you think? When it comes to adventure, there are few electric car companies truly prepared for off-road lifestyles, and Rivian really does lead the pack when it comes to overland fun. 
So far this year, we've seen the startup begin production and deliveries of its R1T electric pickup truck, establish its adventure network of off-road charging points, and hold a media launch that included tackling some pretty impressive off-road trails. But now it's about to add a new string to its off-road bow for adventurous owners, a recovery and maintenance service. At least, that's what a recently filed trademark application with the US Patent and Trademark Office suggests. Rivian applied to trademark the term Rivian Scout, and it says it intends to use the name for maintenance, service and repair. While nothing else is given, we're thinking a Tesla service ranger, but perhaps more comfortable with coming to find you on the trail. Coming next, short shorts. But first, a word from one of today's sponsors, U-Gears. U-Gears combines everything you remember from the engineering toys you may have played with as a child with the beauty of sustainable wooden parts, the accuracy of laser cut pieces, and the joy of ingeniously fully functioning mechanical models. U-Gears offers a wide range of beautiful, fully functional 3D models that you can assemble yourself at home with no prior experiences, with clear, easy to follow instructions right there in the accompanying beautifully made assembly book. There's no glue needed to assemble the parts and you get everything you need inside the box to make your own module, ranging from simple creations suitable for ages five and up all the way through to incredibly detailed engineering models like this amazing Roadster, complete with working drivetrain and wooden V8. And the plywood used, it comes from sustainably managed forests and meets all international safety standards. We have teamed up with U Gears and we'd love you to check out its website where you'll find a whole host of amazing, realistic mechanical models and kinetic sculptures. Prices start from just $10 and work all the way up from there. So check out the link below to pick out yours. Full disclaimer, we are working on a commission. So if you follow the link, we will get a kickback. And now, it's time for short shorts. DB Shenka has ordered 1,470 volt to zero delivery vehicles. Designed for inner city logistics, DB Shenka, which specializes in logistics, will be the first company to use them in real world conditions. Mercedes has unveiled the Project Maybach EV concept, designed in collaboration with the late fashion design legend Virgil Abloh. The concept is wild, challenging, and in its own way, maybe a bit brilliant. Essentially an off-roader with retro-tastic 40s overtones. The order books for the Polaris Ranger XP Kinetic have opened. The all-electric ATV was designed in partnership with Zero Motorcycles and has some impressive stats. With prices going from 20 grand to 40 grand US though, it's sold out for now. The Skoda Enyaq IV is getting a major upgrade in DC fast charging speeds, with the new Enyaq IV60 getting a bump from 50 kilowatts to 120 kilowatts peak, and the Enyaq IV80 models now getting 125 peak. En route, which operates rest stops in the Canadian province of Ontario, will install DC fast charging at most of its facilities by next summer. 17 en route rest stops will get at least two charging stalls with further expansion planned. The Menlo EV, GM's electric crossover for the Chinese market, is getting a big boost in performance for 2022. It gets a 28% increase in range thanks to a 16.3% increase in battery capacity. After seeking a new trial in Norwegian courts on claims that it throttled the charging speed of certain early Model S sedans, Tesla has lost the new case and has been ordered to pay affected owners the equivalent of US$14,000 each. GM has joined the Initiative for Responsible Mining Assurance, or IRMA for short. It's an organization that provides independent third-party verification and certification of ethical and environmental standards for mining operations. About time, GM. West Oakland, California has the worst air quality in the area, prompting the California Department of Transportation to build 17 fast charging stations at City Center West Garage to encourage more residents to switch to an all-electric vehicle. The government of Saudi Arabia and Taiwanese electronics giants Foxconn are in talks that could see the two form a new joint venture to produce electric cars for the Saudi market. This, by the way, has nothing to do with the nation's investment in Lucid Motors. Tesla is recalling just over 800 Model Ys due to potential failure in a steering knuckle. If it isn't clear yet if it's the same steering knuckle fault that caused over 21,000 Chinese Model Ys to be recalled. As of November 25th, over 1.65 lakh, or 165,000 electric cars, buses and motorcycles have received subsidies under India's faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles program. Electrify America has now installed 
30 megawatt hours of battery capacity at around 140 of its DC fast charging stations throughout the US. The Tesla built power packs are used to smooth out energy demand, which can help stabilize demand pricing. BMW is seeking a temporary reduction in import duties to India as it plans to introduce three electric models into the Indian market. BMW plans to eventually produce EVs for Indian customers in India, but it says it needs the imports to first drive up demand. Mercedes-Benz and Stellantis became the most recent automakers to invest in Massachusetts-based battery startup Factorial Energy. The company, which is working on next-generation solid-state batteries for EVs, is rapidly gaining attention. Mazda's MX-30 EV may have launched earlier this year, but everyone who's driven it says it's underwhelming, and sales so far show it's only sold 120 examples. We are blaming poor range and charging and a high sticker price. Just in time for the holidays, Tesla has unveiled the Cyberquad for Kids. Built by Radio Flyer, which also makes a Model S ride on, it's no power wheels and it's already sold out. Also sold out, a new Cybertruck whistle, costing 50 bucks. Mercedes has opened the European order books for its new EQB electric SUV, which is intended to compete with the Tesla Model Y, Audi Q4 e-tron and Ford Mustang Mark e Prices start at just over 55,000 euro before incentives. Elon Musk has again been feeding the hype train about the Tesla Cybertruck, with some outlets claiming that he'd confirmed the truck will come with a yoke instead of a steering wheel. He didn't actually say that though, instead calling it a quote, insane technology bandwagon. Go figure. StoreDot has unveiled a quote, self-healing battery design that it says will allow for underperforming battery cells to be automatically taken out of service, reconditioned and returned to service, all without a battery pack or needing input from a driver. Formula E and the FIA have teased the third generation of the Formula E race car. It's lighter and smaller than its predecessor and promises some high performance figures while also being engineered to recover maximum energy from regenerative braking. As it gets ready to launch its Ultium powered EVs across various brands, GM has announced a new factory in collaboration with Posco Chemical to produce cathodes for EVs. It will continue to use LG energy for its actual battery cells. Getting enough lithium for EV batteries is becoming a problem, and with more focus on ethical and zero emission mining, Vulcan Energy says it has a solution, a geothermal lithium extraction. It says its technique could extract enough lithium for one million EVs per year by the middle of the decade. Toyota and BYD's partnership, first announced over a year ago, looks to be bearing fruit, with the two companies announcing an upcoming compact and lower cost electric vehicle for the Chinese market using BYD's Blade battery technology. Likely owing in no small part to the massive ongoing recall campaign, Consumer Reports has dropped the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV from its recommended vehicle list due to reliability concerns. Bolt production is expected to resume until early next year. Mercedes is touting the efficiency of its yet-to-be-revealed Vision EQ X concept, which will be unveiled on January 3rd. Given the timing of the reveal, we would love to think it will be revealed at CES in Las Vegas, but that's just speculation from the team. Shell and NIO are partnering to produce co-branded battery swapping and charging infrastructure in China, with 100 sites expected to be live by 2025. An expansion into the European market is potentially on the table as well. Zero Labs, which converts classic vehicles into electric ones, has announced its third generation EV platform. The new platform is already in use and includes up to 250 miles of range, that's 402 kilometers, and optional DC fast charging. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. With its official North American launch happening in the next few weeks, Hyundai's Ioniq 5 has received its official EPA ratings, and just as everyone had expected, the new eGMP platform on which it's based is most certainly delivering on range. According to official EPA figures, the all-wheel drive long-range version of the Ioniq 5 will manage a respectable 256 miles of range per charge of its 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's 408 kilometers, placing it in a similar territory to the Chevrolet Bolt EV 
and Kia e Nero. But the rear-wheel drive long-range variant with that same size battery pack manages 303 miles, 487 kilometers of range on a full charge. And with 800 volt battery technology standard, it's going to be super quick to charge as well, meaning it might be a no-brainer for those who want to make long distance trips on a regular basis. We're hoping to get behind the wheel very soon, so watch this space for more about this exciting new car. And finally, when you think of an electric car that's suitable for camping on the road, you're probably going to think about the aforementioned Volkswagen ID Buzz, Rivian R1T, or perhaps even a Tesla Model X with camping mode enabled. All of those vehicles have plenty of space, lots of load carrying capability, and features that make camping with them an absolute breeze. But the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, well, that's one I'm betting that you didn't think of being particularly camping friendly. Yet one upmarket travel gear company, namely DB, has come up with a retrofit bundle to make a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo the camper of someone's dreams. Called the Discoverberry Bundle, it features a streamlined rooftop tent complete with access ladder. It's gonna kill your range and frankly, who wants to take a Taycan off-road? Answer, someone who thinks that the nearly $400,000 price tag is reasonable. And that's not me. <laughs> and on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, uh, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And another shout out to you gears We all love the models that you gears makes and we think they would be the perfect gift for someone special in your life. Check them out at the link below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and smashing the bell, both for this channel and for Transport Evolved Take Two. And don't forget too to visit our swag store where you can buy this Transport Evolved hoodie that should blow away the bad sweater curses of holidays gone by. Oh, and if you are feeling chatty, check out our Discord server. It's free and the link is below. We're always welcoming of new Patreon supporters, or you can send us something through Kofi or Bitcoin. Anything you can send will be greatly appreciated and will go directly towards either paying the salaries of the five people now on the team or making sure that we can make it to CES next month. We are saving money to help save for the CES road trip, so know that we are operating as leanly as we can. I will be back next week with another Roundup show, but until then, keep your eyes peeled for some truly amazing content from the rest of the team and as always, keep evolving.